Hello? Yeah, yes, this is me. Yes, I'm sure it's me. At what? I've won a million shillings. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, I have a bank account. You, you need me to pay a, a, fa, a facility. What's that? Oh, okay. Uh, how much? Just 10,000. And the reward is mine. Hey, sir, sir, but just let me. Wait, Judy, Nimba, you didn't hear? I've just won a million, and I need to give these guys a, fac a, fa a facilitation fee of 10,000, and I get my money. Wasi, I heard. That's why I hung up for you. Those guys on the phone were just fishing. At the fishing? What does fishing have to do with this? It didn't sound like they were on a boat. Unani kazi anini, may just want my money. No, Wasi. They were con artists. If anything, I've just saved you 10,000 shillings. I need to teach you how to protect your money from scams. Ah, uh, okay, Judy, but you better be right. Of course I am, Wasi. Let me school you. What you've just experienced is what is known as consumer fraud. Consumer fraud is generally defined as an instance in which an individual or other entity suffers a financial or other personal loss as a direct result of deceptive or intentionally misleading business practices. Think of it as buying a new car and then coming to realize that the car dealer sold you a used one. Many think that consumer fraud only affects unwitting people who are all too willing to be duped. In truth, even the most savvy consumer can fall victim to fraud. It may be as simple as getting stuck paying a high rate for a magazine subscription, or it may be as devastating as having someone steal your identity. One of the most prevalent forms of consumer fraud is identity theft. This occurs when personal information is used by an individual who is not authorized to possess or use that information. Examples include the illegal acquisition of a credit card or bank account number. This individual may use information to transfer money from a victim's account to another. Such funds can be extremely difficult to track down once the theft has occurred. Many times, a person will receive a letter or phone call from someone who claims to represent a company or financial institution. This individual may offer products or services such as sweepstakes or credit cards that promise high financial returns to all participants. Most of these types of offers are designed to lure the victim into providing the person with information or payment designed to ensure their enrollment into the offered program. In many cases, the information is improperly used and the victim never receives whatever service or product they believed they had ordered or purchased. With the growing number of people who bank, shop and pay bills online, the internet has become a key hunting ground for fraudsters. A variety of frauds can occur on the internet, from purchase fraud, to online automotive fraud, to dating fraud. Purchase fraud occurs when a criminal uses fraudulent means to pay for a transaction, such as a stolen or fake credit card. As a result, merchants do not get paid for the sale. Online automotive fraud occurs when a fraudster posts a phony vehicle, typically a luxury car, for sale on a website, well below its value. An interested buyer looking for a bargain emails the fraudster who responds saying that the car is still available but is located overseas. Or the scammer will say that he is out of the country but the car is with a shipping company. The fraudster then instructs the victim to send a deposit or full payment via wire transfer to initiate the shipping process. To make the transaction seem more legitimate, the fraudster will ask the buyer to send money to a fake third-party account that offers purchase protection. The unwitting victims wire the funds and subsequently discover that they have been scammed. With respect to dating fraud, the fraudster develops a relationship with their victim through an online dating site and convinces the victim to send money to the fraudster. The request for money can be a one-time event 
or repeated over an extended period of time. Scammers take advantage of the trust people place in bankers' checks to steal money from your account or to avoid paying for your goods and services. A bankers' check is a check guaranteed by a bank, drawn on the bank's own funds and signed by a cashier. Bankers' checks lately have become an attractive vehicle for fraud when used for payments to consumers because it's difficult to detect fraudulent bankers' checks. When you deposit a fraudulent check in your account, the law requires your bank to make the funds available within a specific period of time, even if the check has not been cleared yet through the banking system. Once the check is returned unpaid, your bank generally can reverse the deposit to your account and collect the amount of the deposit from you. It is important to note that although the amount of the banker's check quickly becomes available for withdrawal by the consumer after the consumer deposits the check, these funds do not belong to the consumer if the check proves to be fraudulent. It may take weeks to discover that a banker's check is fraudulent. When the fraud is detected, that consumer owes the bank the full amount of the banker's check that has been deposited. Con artists are always looking for ways to get your personal or financial information, username, passwords, and credit card details. When they use the internet to do that, it's called phishing. These scam artists send emails or pop-up messages that might alert you to a problem with your account or state that you have a refund waiting. Some of these messages appear to come from legitimate companies. Unexpected windfall. You receive a letter informing you that you have the right to receive a substantial sum of money. For example, the letter may state that you have won a foreign lottery or are the beneficiary of someone's estate. The letter will state that you have to pay a fee before you receive the money, but a banker's check will be enclosed to cover that fee. The letter will ask you to deposit the banker's check into your account and wire the fee to a third party, usually in a foreign country. The banker's check turns out to be fraudulent and it is your responsibility to return the funds. Mystery shopping. You receive a letter informing you that you have been chosen to act as a mystery shopper. The letter includes a banker's check and you are told to deposit the check into your account. You are told to use a portion of the funds to purchase merchandise at a designated store, transfer a portion of the funds to a third party and keep the remainder. The banker's check turns out to be fraudulent and now you are required to pay the bank the entire sum. If you believe you have become a victim of fraud, here are the steps you should take. First, contact any institution that holds an account you believe to have been compromised, such as a bank or mobile network provider. By freezing the account and or flagging it for fraud, the institution that holds the account will stop all transactions until the matter has been resolved. The banks and mobile providers also have fraud departments that will investigate the matter and assist in contacting the right authorities to escalate the matter. Next, close the affected accounts. Once account information has been obtained by a disreputable entity, that account will no longer be a safe place to store financial or personal data. Open new accounts and take all possible precautions to safeguard your new account information. After speaking with your bank, Determine if it's necessary to contact the police to inform them that you have become a victim of personal fraud. If your complaint is unrelated to theft, but instead has to do with unfair business practices, you as a consumer have rights. Kenya's Consumer Protection Act provides protection for the consumer and prevents unfair trade practices. What steps should you take to protect yourself from becoming a victim of consumer fraud? Try to know the people with whom you do business. When possible, verify information about the buyer from an independent third party. When you use the internet to sell goods or services, consider other options such as online payment systems, rather than payment by a banker's check. If you do accept a banker's check for payment, never accept a check for more than your selling price if you are expecting to pay the excess to someone else. 
ask yourself why the buyer would be willing to trust you with funds that probably belong to someone else. Reject any offer that asks you to pay for a prize or gift. Save your documents. You may need these papers if something goes wrong. Don't throw away bills or any documents containing an account or other personal details. Use a shredder or cut it into pieces. Don't leave receipts behind. Cross-check your credit card bills against these receipts. Keep a tight hold on your purse or wallet. Pickpocketing and purse snatching are risks. Don't use the same password on multiple sites. When shopping online, avoid unknown e-commerce sites. Keep your computer secure. Make sure your antivirus software is always up to date. Never provide your personal information in response to an unsolicited request, whether it is over the phone or over the internet. Now do you see why I cut your call, Wasi? What? Yes. Aki, <laughs> thanks, Judy. You saved me, Annie. Phew! Where would I be without you, Judy?